and members of the procession to this 74, 77th inaugural lecture to be delivered by Professor Comfort Adenike Onifade, titled Contemporary Social Political Issues, National Development and Sustainability. Shall we have the national anthem? Uh, Thank you very much. Please, let's be seated. Thank you very much. Once again, we welcome you to the 77th inaugural lecture. And first, let me quickly take the introduction of members of the high table. First, we have uh, the vice chancellor and chairman of this inaugural lecture, a professor of plant breeding and genetics, Professor Olushola Babatunde Kende, fellow Genetic Society of Nigeria, fellow Institute of Health and Safety. Please a round of applause for him. We also have the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Christian Ikeobi. Please a round of applause for him. Also seated is the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development, Professor Kola Wale Adebayo. You're welcome, sir. Our registrar is on seat. Please let's welcome Dr. Bola Adekola. Our university bossa, our bossa, Mr. Chukunweke Ezekwe Azu. You're welcome, sir. 
Before today, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Development used to be the toast of the principal officers, but the table has turned as someone is launched into baptism of duty. I'm talking of our university librarian, our new university librarian, Dr. Abayomi Owolabi. Please let's welcome him. Fresh, like the oven baked bread. You're welcome, sir. And we have the Dean of the inaugural lecturer. I'm talking of the Dean, College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development, Professor Emmanuel Olu Wagbinga Fakoya. You're welcome, sir. And the inaugural lecturer's head of department, HOD, Communication and General Studies, Professor Onye Kwere Nwaogo. Please, let's welcome him. A round of applause for him. If you are in this hall today, I think you should count yourself very lucky to be among those to listen to this inaugural lecture, especially if you engage yourself in public affairs analysis. And I'm sure every one of us discuss our social political issues. Therefore, today, our 77th inaugural lecturer will broaden our knowledge on some of these social political issues. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's join our hands together and welcome a professor of social studies in the Department of Communication and General Studies from the College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development, Professor Comfort Adenike Unifade, with the topic Contemporary Social Political Issues, National Development, and Sustainability. Please permit me to also welcome the Unifadi's family, led by Professor Olufemi Sunday Unifadi, the husband of the inaugural lecturer. Members of Nau Nigeria University Women seated here, members of Colam Road and Communication and General Studies Department, please, you are all welcome. Sir, I seek your permission to recognize one special person here today who, after five years, successfully handed over the button to another person. I'm talking of no one else but our immediate past university librarian, Professor Mrs. Conf Mrs. Uh, Nike Unifadi Feintola Nike Unifadi. This week in Funabi, it's all about the Unifadis. And I think they have something in common Nike, Nike, and Unifadi. Congratulations, ma'am. Right now, please permit me to specially invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor Olushola Babatunde Kendi, to give the Vice Chancellor's welcome address and formally present the inaugural lecturer. Thank you very much. May I call on Professor Comfort Adenike Unifadi to please stand up and remain standing. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic the Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, the Registrar, the Bursa, the University Librarian, the inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Comfort Adenike Onifade, the Dean, College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development, other deans and directors, Head of Communication and General Studies Department, other heads of departments and units here present, members of the Onifade family, all special guests and friends of the university, members of the university community, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, great Funabites, great Funabites. It is with great delight that I welcome you all to the 77th inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, Nigeria. Today's inaugural lecturer, Professor Comfort Adenike Onifade, was born on June 8, 1955. Today is June 7, 2023. to the family of late Pa John Omoshonwan Alabi and late Madam Elizabeth Onyelade Alabi Ni Amodu, both of Ipe, Ipe, both of Ipe, Onyo, local government area of Kuala State, education background. 
Professor Comfort Onifade had a primary education, classes one to six, at African Church Primary School, Oshogbo, Oshun State. She completed her primary education at a St. Louis St. Quara State in 1968 and proceeded to Igbomina Baptist Grammar School in St. Louis in 1969. In 1974, she got admission to Queen Elizabeth Secondary School in Lorraine for higher school certificate studies. Thereafter, Professor Comfort Onifade proceeded to the University of Ibadan in 1976 and graduated with a Bachelor of Arts History, second class upper division in 1979. She was posted to Kaduna State for her NYSC and served in National Archives, Kaduna. In 1984, she completed the postgraduate diploma in education at Amadou Bello University, Zaria, and then went further to obtain the MED, Masters in Education, Curriculum and Instruction, and a PhD in Social Studies from the same university in 1991 and 2002, respectively. Professor Comfort Onifade started her career as a lecturer in Katsina College of Arts and Science, Zaria, and the School of Basic Studies, ABU Zaria. When the latter was phased out, she was seconded to Demonstration Secondary School of the University in 1983. She rose to become the principal mistress until she transferred her services to Funab in 2003 as lecturer two. Professor Comfort Onifade attained the post of Professor of Social Studies in October 2016 and served as the head of Department of Communication and General Studies from 2018 to 2021. Her areas of research include contemporary social and political issues, conflict studies, gender issues, and governance. She has over 50 published articles in reputable national and international journals focusing on gender differences, factors hindering higher education for women, ethno-religious conflicts and insecurity challenges in Nigeria, among others. She has conducted many researches on all categories of people, from primary school pupils to secondary, tertiary institution students, as well as among rural and urban households. One of our research projects funded by Tertiary Education Trust from Tet Fund was on the effect of violence against women on the welfare of women and children in Ogun and Kwara State in Nigeria. No wonder now who is deep, heavily represented here. Professor Comfort Onifade is well-traveled, visiting among other countries, Switzerland, Turkey, Mexico, Bangkok in Thailand, Dubai in South Africa, among others for conferences. A counselor and a life coach engaging in pre and post marital counseling. She has mentored many young people and couples. Her deep hatred for poverty and social vices coupled with her desire for a peaceful society led to the establishment of the Initiative for Peace and Comfort, IPC, a non-governmental organization through which she has reached out to thousands of people, including students, youth and women, homes and families. She's a development actor and member of Civil Society of Nigeria. As a member of the National Steering Committee of Civil Society Coalition on Sustainable Development, she has represented the organization in high profile advocacy forum. Professor Comfort Onifade is the national president of the Nigerian Association of University Women. A round of applause for our distinguished inaugural lecturer of today. And of course, Nau is an affiliate of the Graduate Women International with headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. She is the convener and organizer of some conferences and workshops, including HUSCON 2020. She has successfully supervised six PhD, 20 masters, and over 150 postgraduate diploma students in education. Professor Mrs. Comfort Onifade is an external examiner for the Department of Sociological Studies, Taishola and University of Education, adjunct lecturer, Taishola and College of Education, 
and has assessed professorial candidates for some universities, including University of Lagos and Obafemi Awolowo University. She's also a reviewer of books and articles for some journals and, of course, individuals. Administrative experience. Our inaugural lecturer of today was the head of department communication and general studies between 2018 and 2021. Of course, national president, Nigerian Association of University Women, 2022 to date. Member, mock accreditation team for the Christland University Abe Uputa in 2019. Departmental coordinator for part-time degree program, 2015-2016. And then formally, the president of NAU FUNAP chapter between 2012 and 2022. And also, a member of the committee set up by the vice chancellor to develop Operation Feed Ogun project, proposal on sustainable cassava maize and rice production to be funded by Center for Human Security of Olushe Gwamba Sonjo Presidential Library, among others. Membership of professional bodies. She's a member of the following professional bodies. Social Studies Association of Nigeria, Nigerian Association of Evaluators, Freedom of Information Coalition of Nigeria, and Society for Peace Studies and Practice. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Professor Comfort Onifade is a singer and a member of Ibarra Baptist Church Choir. She's happily married to Professor Olufemi Onifade, and they are blessed with sons and daughters. Femi James and Martina, Fola and Adetola, and Folusho, and Moradike, Onifade, and also many grandchildren. Oluwade Milade, Oluwada Rasimi, Oluwani Femi, Ire Oluwa, Oluwa Sheni, Ade Oluwa, and Oluwa Tony. Congratulations, ma. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Comfort Adenike Onifade from the Department of Communication and General Studies to present our inaugural lecture titled Contemporary Social Political Issues, National Development and Sustainability. Thank you for your attention and God bless you. The Vice Chancellor, Federal University of Agriculture, Habi Okuta, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Development, the Registrar, the Bursa, the University Librarian, the Dean, College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development, Deans of other colleges, Student Affairs and Postgraduate School. Directors of Institutes and Academic Centers, Head of Communication and General Studies, other heads of department, members of the University Senate, all academic and non-teaching staff, all special guests and friends of the university, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, great Funabites, greatest of the greatest Funabites, it gives me great pleasure to be here this afternoon. I am very grateful to my father in heaven, the Agbani Lagbaton himself, the lifter up of my head, my way maker, the covenant keeper, the promise keeper, my light in the darkness, for the grace to deliver the 77th inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abiyokuta. 
This presentation marks the height of an encounter I had with the Lord in September year 2000. I almost lost hope of completing my PhD and was only getting ready our Lord to join my husband who had reported for work in July of that year in this university. However, on that day, the way maker himself decided to step into the situation. Having discussed with my husband, I stayed back. The situation the Lord entered into with me, it was like I didn't want to complete. And the Lord said, I am not ready to allow you to go empty handed. You cannot go out of Zaria empty handed, my daughter. So it is too late for you to say you don't want this degree anymore. And so I discussed with my husband and what to see today is a miracle. Standing here before you today is a miracle. Yes. My area of specialization in social studies include contemporary social political issues, education, conflict studies, as well as gender studies. Just as it was read before, I've conducted studies on youth, students, rural dwellers, urban dwellers. Studies on contemporary social political problems, some factors impeding development and threatening the existence and survival of Nigeria include studies on moral values, virtue ethics, ethnic and religious conflicts, ensuring free and fair elections, democratic governance, incessant fuel crisis, gender studies, and of course, problems of development and sustainability of the nation. Let me just quickly say one or two things about social studies. Social studies is an interdisciplinary subject that draws upon history, geography, economics, law, political science, and other disciplines. And it is defined as the people, one of the definitions that is the people in the study of people in relation to each other and their world. It's also the study of man in the physical and social environment. It is also a way of life. How people influence and are influenced by the physical, social, political, economic, psychological, and cultural environments. The more advanced countries rely on social studies to solve the numerous prevailing problems in their society by inculcating national consciousness among the citizens. It was first introduced in the United States of America and Britain in 1921 and 1945, respectively. The beginning of social studies in Nigeria. It was first introduced in Nigeria as an experimental plan or work at the Ayeturo Comprehensive High School in Ogun State in 1963. The term national development refers to the improvement of a country in all areas, including the political, economic, social, and all that. It involves reconstruction and development of numerous aspects of the life of a nation. Let me say here that there can be growth without development. Example is when you have increase in population without necessarily having the infrastructure for the population. Now, just one of the uh, areas of social studies in national development, it helps to develop a sense of shared citizenship where people learn about their rights and responsibilities as citizens of a nation. When I say citizens, it provides citizens with the knowledge, skills, and understanding to become active and engaged members of a nation. And when I say citizen, I mean citizen in the right sense. The Greek have three types, or they mention three types of people in the society. You have one, the idiots. Two, you have tribes. Then three, you have the citizen. Who is the tribe or who is the idiot? The idiots in the society are people who just do not care about development or sustainability of their nation. 
If they write an exam, they will cheat. If they are in government, they will steal. And when you see an idiot, you will quickly know them. Uh, you can see the picture there. Uh, is this not an idiot? Um, the person driving and all the people on top of the vehicle. If they drink water, they will throw the, water, the bottle on the ground. The tribes men, they are, a little, they are no better than the idiots because they look at everything from the point of view of their tribe or party. If you're a member of their party, you are good to go. Now, and then the citizen, these are they who like to do things the right way. They will respect traffic light rules even if no one is watching them. They drive within speed limits, they respect and obey the laws. Sustainability. This is the art and capability of fulfilling the needs of current generations without compromising the needs of future generations. Now, there are five key factors in sustainability. These are the political cohesion, community participation, environmental stability, economic stability, sustainability, social, cultural respect. Now, sustainability is not limited to Nigeria alone. It's a worldwide thing. And the concern about sustainability gave back to the Millennium Development Goals uh, that was signed by many countries of the world to reduce hunger, poverty, and among other goals. In September of 2015, 69 of the world leaders assented to a more ambitious set of goals called the Sustainable Development Goals with 17 goals and 169 targets. The key words of sustainable development are prosperity, people, planet, peace, and partnership. At the center of sustainability is man, who is expected to drive the factors of sustainable development. Social studies deals with man in its environment. Then we have the pillars of sustainable development, the environment, the social and economic. Obstacles against sustainability, corruption, human rights abuse, policy failure, insecurity, weak leadership, violence against women, and so on and so forth. Suffice it to say that there is a great positive relationship between social studies and sustainable development. Now, go on to my contributions to knowledge, my research, my research work. I have worked just like I said in different areas, but first I will take the cultural sustainability. Onifade Adura Dola and Namao in year 2013 conducted a study on the effect of socioeconomic survival of Okada riders on African cultural values of respect for elders and human lives. Why did we go into it? We, we observed a situation whereby the, a, a young person riding Okada in the name of, uh, I, I'm riding Okada so reckless, will just start to abuse an elder. They start to abuse an elder without noting that, ah, this is a, a, an elder. And then we found out the following, that Okada rider riding is an organized business venture and majority of the operators were in the business for socioeconomic survival. The harsh economic reality coupled with the problem of unemployment forced many of them to engage in the business. Their desperation for survival led to the transfer of their aggression on road users, not minding age or any other factor. Their attitude did not portray African cultural and moral values. Now, we tested some aspect of it and found that uh, they were still found wanting. Then we also had a study conducted by Onifade Imonopi and Yurim, 2013, on the imperative of moral values and virtue ethics in addressing the insecurity challenge in Nigeria. Among the security challenges facing Nigeria were the Boko Haram saga, the kidnapping, banditry, Niger Delta problem, and so on and so forth. And uh, we looked at the theologies of insecurity in Nigeria. 
And this among are the ethno-religious conflicts, disconnect between the people and governance, inter-agency rivalry, among others. And we said that the issue of security borders on human rights. It borders on human rights. And we looked at some of the human rights that has to do with uh, the issue of security. Article one of that human rights says, all humans are born free and equal in dignity and rights. And we have article three, rights to life, liberty, and security of persons. On Ifade and Adura Adola 2013, examine the trend of ethno-religious crisis in Nigeria. Now, we have heard that there were many uh, people who were uh, eth ethnocentric and that uh, we wanted to know whether this one was true of students also in tertiary institution. Now, these were the list of the crisis that were recorded. We have them uh, right from the first one till the one that we are still experiencing now. In also 2013, Odin and Imonopi examined the audios that Nigeria needs to cross towards achieving national integration. These audios include ethnicity, corruption, weak institutions, political leadership, among others. There were efforts put in place to promote national integration. Some of them were the introduction of federalism by the Littington Constitution of 1954, the creation of states and the land use decree, the National Youth Service Corps, the federal character principle, and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, as laudable as these policies were, there is still a journey gap between intent and actual practice of those policies, thus making them counterproductive and Nigeria's unity has continued to be plagued and threatened by embedded sociocultural, religious, and political dichotomies. Now we move on to the issue of fuel crisis. I'm sure we are all feeling it now. Oju, Onifade and Ojuku, 2010, identify the role and concept of good governance, the trend of fuel crisis in Nigeria, causes and effects of fuel crisis, and identify ways of preventing fuel crisis in Nigeria. Nigeria, which uh, is, is a member state of OPEC, the crude oil of Nigeria is preferred by many non-oil producing countries like Britain and the United States of America. Unfortunately, the country is rich in oil, but the economy is still struggling. Now we were able to identify the trend of fuel crisis when it started first with General Yogub Gowon in 1973, from six Kobo to 8.4 Kobo per liter, and on and on till when we have it today. By the time I wrote this, it was still 185 or 200. Now today, I think uh, I may ask from you how much the fuel costs now. <laughs> now, causes of fuel, incessant fuel crisis. One is vandalization of oil pipelines, corruption, nonchalant attitude of some leaders, holding of the commodity by some marketers, insufficient refineries among others. And of course, we provided some way forward, especially the issue of creating an enabling environment for Nigerians who have refineries outside, outside the country to invest in Nigeria. Uh, needless to say that the commissioning of Dangote's refinery is one of the very good things that can happen to Nigeria in terms of development and sustainability, because we expect that it will bring about some kind of a uh, good positive response to us. Now we move on to the issue of corruption in Nigeria. Now, Ojuku, uh, Onifadi and Ojuku studied the issue of corruption as the being in Nigeria's development. Corruption seems to have permeated the entire fabric of the state 
that it has caused disaffection among the national ethnic nationalities. And uh, of course, it's one of the major giants seriously affecting not only the national integration, but the prosperity, economic and social development of Nigeria. Now, we identified four dimensions to the cause of corruption. And this was also done, this study was also carried out by Thompson et al. Now, four dimensions to the cause of corruption are the political dimension, the social, economic, and the environment. Politically, corruption constitutes an, an obstacle to democracy and the rule of law. Economically, it leads to the depletion of national wealth, hinders the development of fair market structure, and distorts competition, thereby deterring investment. Socially, corruption undermines people's trust in the political system, institutions, and leadership. And on the environmental plane, it has devastating, it, it makes devastating projects to be given preference in funding because they are easy targets for siphoning public money into private accounts. These are part of the major problems that hinder sustainability and which the world leaders seek to address through the sustainable development goals. Now, here we have the faces of corrupt practices, the one for money, assets, people, and power. But in spite of the numerous anti-corruption policies and programs set out by previous administrations, much has not been achieved. Thompson, Afolabi, and Odin Fade, 2020, in a metaphoric caption, when I see the broom, I will pass over you. Using a critical analysis of literature, media reports, and press releases, assess the anti-corruption crusade of the just concluded administration of President Muhammad Buhari. It was uh, between 2015 and 2019. It was so bad that we can remember a quotation here. I am told that there are a lot of very senior people from the PDP who have decided to join forces with President Buhari to take the broom to sweep away the PDP and to continue to ensure that APC continues to preside all over Nigeria. We have quite a number of other leaders who have come. In fact, once you have joined APC, all your sins are forgiven. Okay? This is, the above is credited to the former APC national chairman at a, an election rally in January 2019. The broom here symbolizes the APC. The statement meant that opponents who decamp to the APC at all levels to support the re-election of PMB will be shielded from prosecution if prosecuted for corruption. And that is to tell us how terrible we are using, some of our leaders are making use of their power even to continue with the issue of corruption. Now here we have corruption index of Nigeria from 2000 to year 2022. And we still see that Nigeria is still very much backward. Another study was carried out to examine the tendency of students in tertiary institutions towards corrupt practices based on geographical location. This is Onifade and uh, Ojuko. Finding revealed that in, irrespective of geographical location, more than half of the students had a low tendency toward corrupt practices. The implication, that was when it was conducted, 2009. The implication of the finding is that a ray of hope was shown that if adequate attention is given to teaching the right type of education and values, a higher proportion will probably be good and honest citizens. Here we have some of the maps uh, for the prevalence of bribery by type of public officials in Nigeria, 2016 to 2019. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I have conducted several studies on gender differences in different domains and with respect to sustainability of this nation. I will just report a few of them. 
here. Onifa Day and Bodun Day, 2009, examine gender differences in students' response to corrupt practices in Nigeria. For us to remember, gender refers to the social, psycho social psychological, cultural, behavioral aspect of being a man or woman, not, biologic, not biological. It refers to the specific roles assigned by the society for male and female. And we know that when God created male and female, he had specific roles each of them, for each of them in order to have a sustainable world. Each gender should be allowed to contribute their quota to the sustainability of the world with no discrimination. Undue concentration on one gender cannot ensure sustainability, sustainable development, and, uh, and development. So we examine the differences, and the finding shows that there was no significant difference in the responses of the respondents based on gender. That is to say, both of them tended less towards corrupt practices at that study, the time of study. A study conducted by Onifade 2014 was carried out to determine the level of ethnic tolerance of students in the tertiary institutions in Nigeria with special reference to gender differences. We have the map there. Now, the findings show that ethnic problem was not a function of a particular gender. Very much. They both exhibited the same high level of ethnic tolerance with respect to issues of inter-ethnic marriages and non-use of violence to solve community problems. More of them, however, will cooperate with bosses and approved preferential treatment based on ethnic consideration. Women education. Until recently, a lot of effort has been put on educating the males. Women education seems to have been trivialized despite the obvious importance of educating a woman. For instance, a study conducted by Women in Nigeria, 1985, indicated that 75% families would educate their male children as opposed to their children female. However, we know that these studies were in the past, but current situation shows slight improvement. However, some gap still exists, showing that we still need more of women education. Effect of inequalities in male and female education. We have a wide gap between the educational attainment of female vis-a-vis -vis their male counterparts, difficulty for a woman to gain the inner power to express and defend her rights, low self-confidence, low self-esteem, and so on and so forth. Onifade and Aikwele, 2014, assess the effect of street hawking on the academic performance of selected secondary school students in Abe Okuta. And we can see uh, the pictures there. Findings reveal that students who did not engage in street hawking performed better academically. More female students than male were engaged in street hawking. Male street hawkers performed better academically than the female ones. Only five day at all, 2021, also examined the impact of cultural practices on the married female postgraduate students in these areas. Child rearing, domestic chores, care for husband and extended family, early marriage, child sex preference, inter-ethnic marriage, religious demands, customary law of inheritance. And we found that the one that is most significant as, uh, was the care for, of husband and extended family members. This one affected their studies. It affected their studies. Now, Oluri et al, 2021, also examined the causes and effects of sexual practices among teenage girls. Sexual practices among teenage girls. Types of sexual practices among teenagers that we found out were these, kissing, caressing, rape, watching of pornography, masturbation. You can see this one, 
and the result there is uh, what the girl is doing. You can see the big tummy there. And we look at some of the causes that parental neglect, peer influence, poverty are some of it. We have more. And then the effects are difficulty to comprehend in class, wandering thoughts, irregularity in classes, getting easily distracted, affecting the girl's educational achievement. We have uh, some of the data here presented. With violence against women and sustainability. Onifade, Adura Dola, and Adamu, 2016, investigated the culture of violence against women and its impact on sustainable food security in Nigeria. Actually, violence against women is a major work, part of my research work. My interest in the area could have been born out of my experience as a child when I witnessed many acts of violence against women in our neighborhood. Now, we looked at household food, uh, food security, that it has four uh, main components. And this is accessibility at all times, availability to, all, to everyone, and utilization by everyone, and stability. Now, acts of violence. This act of violence threatens the security of those who are freely engaging in their daily activities. It obstructs movement, restricts women's ability to participate in income generating activities, and so on and so forth. When battered, a woman will not be able to do her job physically. Emotionally, she withdraws and cannot fit into a group. And this leads to a lot of gap in the chain of food production or processing activities. Table 12 also gives more vivid impact on uh, violence against women. We saw the manifestation of violence and all that. Now, we looked also, only for day at all, 20, year 2020, looked at the effect of violence against women on welfare of children. And this includes low self-esteem, unhappiness, poor academic performance, playing truancy, and tendency to use violence in interpersonal relationships, lack of concentration in school, wrong emulation of their fathers, resulting in bullying others, dejection and sense of rejection, delinquent behavior. These are some of the uh, problems we found out. Frequencies of children witnessing domestic violent behavior. We are 39% of them frequently witnessing it so that we can know the terrible thing that uh, parents, some parents are doing for their children, to their children. Then perception of children on the forms of violence that is prevalent among their parents. The highest there is the physical abuse. Punching, turning the mother to punching bag. Then we look also at the perception of children on the causes of violence between their parents. The highest is financial. When the mother said, bring money, and the man said, ah, for where? And uh, exposure of the effect of exposure to domestic violence on the children. The highest there is unhappiness. They are unhappy. Now, only Friday at all, also 2020, got involved in a, uh, the seminar, a stakeholder forum, after the, con the research on the violence against women, the effect of violence against women. We now had a stakeholder seminar at Ilori to see how we can reduce the issue of violence against women. This was done through the post data uh, stakeholder seminar. The forum took place at ADP or Ilori. The stakeholders present included male and female farmers, representative of civil defense, Ministry of Women Affairs, nurses, NGOs, and members of different agricultural development programs. And these are some of the community strategies that they prefer for solving or reducing violence against women. Effective communication between husband and wife, cultural adjustment, religious, financial, government, community sanction, human development. The Lord has helped me to train 
many students since I started my journey in the academia. Many of them who are professors and high-ranking officers, both within and outside the country. Some of them are here now, and some of them must be watching online. I have uh, Dr. Titi Layo. Pokwala, where are you? Dr. Adi Oshun, Grace Adi Oshun. These are some of our people, and we have other people too. Even our brother, Abdul Salam, Abdul, uh, Abdul Sabu Salam, is one of my students in the demonstration secondary school, Amadou Bello University. So it's my son. <laughs> Supervising over 200 PGDE students projects since inception in 2005. Many of them are doctors and professors also today. Retraining of over 10,000 primary school teachers through the annual Sustainable Development Goal Capacity Building Program. The initiative for peace and comfort was set up in 2013 to cater for the physical, spiritual, emotional needs of young men and women and midwife peace at all levels. Over 30,000 primary school and secondary school students have been reached through our lecture and talk series on how to avoid social problems like teenage pregnancy, autism, human trafficking, indecent dressing, and the like. Many thousands of people have also benefited from our radio programs. My contributions to sustainable, uh, sustainability and sustainable development in Nigeria also uh, include mentoring of young men and women, engaging in pre- and post-marital counseling, high power level representing the civil society at high power level advocacy uh, to influencers all over the place. Conclusion, this lecture has been able to identify some of the contemporary social and political problems hindering effective national development in Nigeria and offer social studies as a discipline that can help produce citizens who will contribute greatly to the development and sustainability of this country. Nigeria is expected to play leadership role in Africa and the world. Available resources can span many generations to come. The present generation must be frugal with the resources. We have also uh, the mantra, that's DG mantra, leave no one behind, is very apt for Nigeria because all lands must be on deck. Recommendations. One. Orientation programs should be organized for aspirants of presidential, governorship, and members of national and state assemblies on characteristics of a good citizen, not on individual or tribesmen, before and after being elected to the office. Leaders and members of trade unions should also be trained to know not only their rights, but also responsibilities to the nation. Regeneration of our good cultural values by homes, that is parents, religious leaders, traditional leaders, and staff in educational institutions should be encouraged. Mass mobilization of the people is necessary to reorientate them with the right values consistent with a modern and emerging economy. And I believe that these, uh, the media will do a lot of uh, good concerning this. For crisis, could be solved by making the existing refineries to function properly and building new ones. Insecurity should be tackled and tackled totally. Corruption must be fought until it is either eradicated or forcibly punished so that those who engage in it do so at their own risk. There should be no secret cows. Leaders should lead by example, providing moral leadership that has true evil must become more transparent and accountable to the people who elected them into office. Government must begin to build enduring institutions bigger and more powerful than the leadership. The discipline social studies should be taught at all levels of education and its curriculum is structured for effective promotion of cultural and sustainable development. I want the student project dissertation and thesis should be linked to targets within the SDGs and lecturers should be well remunerated. 
And I say, lecturers should be well remunerated, including paying their retail salaries. Stakeholders, such as the Akamara, the Rose, uh, Federal Road Safety Corps, the Trace, and Amara, they should organize training for their riders, even while on the job. And finally, there is need for everyone to go back to their creator God and to start to obey him as he will direct. He is the only solution to all human problems. And now, my acknowledgement. My appreciation goes first to God, the Father, Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, the lifter of my head, the author and finisher of my faith, my my strength, my joy, my peace, my all in all. Father, I doff my cup for you. I am grateful to my father, my late parents, Pa John Alabi and Madam Elizabeth Oyelade Alabi. They were both there for us. My father was a disciplinarian to the core, but he was always there for us. I thank God for my father-in-law, late Emmanuel Omoloshu Onifade, the Bobajiro of Yupe. He was an educationist by excellence and an encourager. I also appreciate my mother, Dickiness Fadisha Ebu Onifade, for her love and care, very caring. I am happy that you can witness this online, this lecture online today. The Lord bless you, Mama, in Jesus' name. I'm also grateful to all my brothers and sisters there are two numerals to mention. The Alabi family, thank you. The Onifade family, thank you. They and all other family members, I appreciate you. I want to appreciate the vice chancellors of this university, including the acting vice chancellors. Uh, we have many of them here, some of them here. I also want to thank God for all our DVCs and our current Vice Chancellor, who has uh, made it possible for us to have NAWU headquarters, even in this university. The Lord bless you, sir. I acknowledge the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, for giving me research and travel grants, both for international conferences as well as for research purposes. Thank you very much for uh, the DVCs. I also thank the registrars, the bosses, uh, and the librarians. The university librarians, are. thank you. The Lord bless you all. I said I was posted to the university uh, ABU demonstration secondary school and rose to become a principal mistress. While in the school, I did, I obtained my PGDE, my MED, and my PhD degrees in the secondary school. That is to let you know that nothing is impossible. Wherever you may be, whether you're in the primary school or secondary school, you can attain to the highest uh, the ed educational degree. I acknowledge my, okay, I was appointed as head of department, communication and general studies in August, 2018 to 2021. I appreciate my predecessors, late Professor Shopeju, Professor Bolanle Akere Ali, Professor Helen Bodunde, Professor Dox, Professor Bosede Shotiloye and the incumbent, Professor OGF Nwogo. I also acknowledge the good working relationship with past deans, late Professor Akwantaku, Professor Bolanle Akere Dolo Ali, herself, Professor Dikpe Olu, and the incumbent, Professor Fakoya. Thank you very much. I like to appreciate other members of our department. We are many, and we are a family. Professor Adura Dola, Akintono, Adebiyi, and so on and so forth. Please, I appreciate you all. Thank you very much for being there. The postgraduate students in our, the postgraduate studies in the department involves the university library. The support of the academic staff there is appreciated. Professor Feintola Nike Onifade, we share a lot in common. The same surname, the same, about the same middle name. Thank you, God bless you. And other professors, Bangboye, Ajegbo Mogun, and co. And now our new 
uh, librarian. You, you see, this is the first official assignment that you will be participating in. Thank you, congratulations, and God bless you. Also, uh, the non-teaching staff, I appreciate you in the departments, in the college. I appreciate all other colleagues and friends of other departments and colleges. Professor Sam uh, Oluwalana, in fact, he was very useful while I was preparing my PowerPoint. And all other professors, Goke Bodonde, Adura Dola, Biola Philip, Cho, and Co, and Co. Because of our time, I will not be able to read all these. I appreciate Professor Kenny Fakujuo, Professor Ajayi, Ayide, and so on and so forth. All of you in our college, the Lord bless you. And uh, including uh, those who were my students before, Professor Ashimolowo was my student at the uh, postgraduate diploma in education, including as well as uh, Dr. Ose Matthew. They all they all came to study the PGD. I acknowledge all my teachers in these institutions: Christ African Church Primary School, Shogo, Igbomino Baptist Grammar School, San Luis, Queen Elizabeth College, Ilorin. Our principal, Mr. S. Adepoju, taught us music at a very young age. He is much appreciated, even though he's going to be with the Lord, but the fruit of his labor is still speaking to the glory of God. At the University of Ibadan, I went through the tutelage of Professor Baro Ekime, who just passed on, Professor Bolande Awe, Professor Walio Yemakinde, and at the Amadjubelo University, Professor Festus Ogunlaide, Professor Lao Ofe, Professor Dan Ladi, Professor Abdul Karim. All of them are well appreciated. They we have so many students in the Department of General Studies. The Lord will continue to make you to also, the Lord will lift you up also in Jesus' name. At the National Institute of Education, National Teachers Institute, uh, the Lord helped me to be the uh, coordinator of that program for the postgraduate diploma. And God has helped, put many people there to help me. I'm, I'm grateful to Mrs. Tony Fakwe, Mrs. Felicia Ogunleye, Professor Bodende, Professor uh, Dr. Mrs. Lagoke, Dr. Shoyele, Dr. Uh, Akintade, Dr. Adetoru is here, Matthew Ose, Dr. Professor Yekunle, Dr. Grace Adioshun, and Co. God bless you. Nigerian Association of University Women, you are wonderful people. The Lord bless you. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. I was elected the national president, it has been said. And right here, I know in Geneva, they are also watching uh, what we are doing. Thank you very much. As a member of Social Studies Association of Nigeria, I acknowledge the president of the association, Professor Yusuf Abdul Karim, executive and all members of the association and all other people. And I like to appreciate uh, the universities, university departments of sociology, Taisho Lari University of Education, the Taisho Lari College of Education, University of Lagos, OAU, who uh, appointed me as external examiner or adjunct lecturer. The Center for Promotion of, uh, in Educational Institute is an NGO that seeks to bring all stakeholders together to ensure peace in educational institution. I appreciate Pastor Gbemi Akimbande, who is a member, uh, who is the chairperson of that place. In Zaria, we attended the uh, Calvary Baptist Church, Samaru Zaria. I appreciate everyone there, including uh, Professor Wale of Bowen University. I appreciate all Baptist family in Ogun State, with President uh, Pro Dr. Wale Oyeniyi. And co. Everyone, you are well appreciated. I appreciate Brother Igor and my love to all who are related to us one way or the other. I appreciate and acknowledge the support of our own church, the pastors, the deacons, and everyone, including the ruler of that place. I appreciate you all. I appreciate Ibarra Baptist Church. That is where I worship. My pastor is here. 
and uh, other pastors also. I appreciate you all. Special appreciation to the Chairman Publication Committee, Professor Helen Aduke, Bodunde, and our members. Thank you very much. I am grateful to Professor Luwalano, Mr. Akiola, and Mr. Adeoye Okubena, and Mr. Fumini Oladipupo, who assisted me in the preparation of my PowerPoint. It is my great joy to belong to the Kuto Eminent Chapter of the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship, Fellowship International. I appreciate our chapter president, Engineer Bjordan Fijabi and his wife, and all members of that place. As a development actor, I belong to some, to some civil society. Please excuse me. I belong to some civil societies network, and one of it is the CSCSD. And I appreciate our BOT chairman, Father Patrick Ngoyi, Dr. Tolawin Jobi, Coordinator Moji Atisaya, and so on and so forth. Initiative for Peace and Comfort, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, to my members of my immediate family, I appreciate members of my immediate family. We are blessed with adorable children. Our first son, Oluwafemi James, and his wife, Martina. They are wonderful people. God bless you. Our second son, Oluwa Folaromi and his wife, Adetola, you are wonderful. The Lord bless you. Our third son, Mofoluasho and Moradike, the wife, you are wonderful in Jesus' name. And we, the Lord also bless us with wonderful uh, grandchildren. We have them, yes, their names have been written. Oluwa Demila, Oluwa Darasi, Oluwa Nifemi, Iri Oluwa, Oluwa Sheni, Adi Oluwa, Oluwa Tony, and everybody. <laughs> you will all fulfill destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Mr. Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, God has indeed blessed me with a young man. <laughs> Professor Lufemi Sunday Onifade, my dear husband. Who has always been there for me, encouraging me in my career journey. I remember the time I wanted to give up on my PhD work, but God decided to help me. You did not object to my staying in ABU Zaria to complete the work before joining you here in FUNAB. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will continue to make you the head and not the tail in the name of Jesus Christ. I acknowledge and appreciate you. Thank you very much. We continue to love each other even the more in Jesus' name. Now, unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be glory, honor, power forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Please join me to appreciate this wonderful father as we sing together the song to God be the glory. Oh, 
you very much. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you very much. And we respond. Batarea do ko ko ka. Batarea do ko ko. Tio baka wire. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great funabites. And the greatest funabites. Thank you very much. Um, I have the honor to also invite Professor Mrs. Comfort Adeni Keunifade to please step forward. Thank you, Ma. Um, on behalf of the Council, the Senate, the management, staff, and students of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, I wish to present this award of honor to you as the 77th inaugural lecturer of the university. Today, Wednesday, 7th of June, a day to your birthday. Congratulations, man. Thank you very much, man. Don't go yet, man. Also, I have the pleasure to present this to you from the university. Products from our campus. We want to present this to you. Thank you very much, ma. Once again, congratulations. Thank you very much, distinguished guests. We are gradually getting to the end of the program. But before we leave, we just want to acknowledge and appreciate some of the special personalities that are here. First of all, I want to once again welcome every member of the professor and professor Mrs. Onifade family the children, their spouses, the grandchildren bubbling around, and nephews, nieces, uncles, and every member of the extended family. You are welcome. On behalf of the university, we welcome you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We also have some distinguished guests with, amongst us. Please permit me to quickly recognize them. We have Dr. Goyega Ogunlesi, the retired provost and Chief Medical Director, Neuropsychiatric Hospital. Abel Kuta, you are welcome, sir. You are welcome, Dr. Gulesi. It's nice having you around, sir. We have engineer, Mrs. Abel Odunfi Jabi. The one and only engineer, Mrs. Abel Odunfi Jabi. Ah, uncle. You are welcome. Thank you. We also have Reverend Dr. John Sain, the President, the Baker's House International. You are welcome, sir. God bless you. And of course, this personality has been recognized before. We cannot overdo it. Reverend Dr. T.T. Ola Tumboson, the pastor of Ibarra Baptist Church. You are welcome. You are welcome, sir. And then we also have Mr. Otelaja Olushoga, the HOD Social Studies Department of Sikiru Adetono College of Education, Science and Technology, Omuijebu. Okay, you are welcome, sir. Dr. Olushoga Otelaja, thank you for joining us. And also, Mr. Ulukayo de Aribi, the Zonal Overseer, National Teachers Institute. I think he should be amongst us. Okay, you are welcome. Of course, the Mide Past University Librarian, Professor Fayintolani Keunifade. And please, um, if you have any cause to want to identify the two of them, please put comfort and Fayintola there. Because if you say you want to write Professor Nike Unifade, I'm only that one word. So you are welcome. And of course, our own mommy, Professor Yemisi Erumosele, former Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic. You say, our own auntie, 
her own sister. Yes, so. And of course, seated beside her, another sister, another auntie, former Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Bolanle Akere Doluale. You are welcome. Former Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, too. And of course, we have on this campus, when you say Onku, you know Onku. Professor Adewale Dikpeolu, aka Onku Wale. Dean College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development. You are welcome, sir. The set of people we want to appreciate. I hope the thunderous ovation. Just try to manage it. Members of the Nigerian Association of University Women. Now, aha, now you see the Pele there. And also, we appreciate the members of the Barra Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us. Members of the Barra Baptist Church. Thank you for coming. Members of staff of the College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development. We also thank you for coming. Yes, it's your day today. And of course, a lot, many more people. We have other things, directors, heads of departments. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And the great Funabites. Great Funabites. Greatest and the greatest and the greatest Funabites. That we're always here. Thank you for joining us. So this marks the end of the 77th inaugural lecture of this university. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Please, a better round of applause for the Vice Chancellor. Contemporary social political issues, national development, and sustainability. I said it in the beginning. If you're not in this hall to listen to this lecture, then you are missing out. Now, when you discuss or argue politics, you should be able to identify an idiot, a tribesman, or a citizen. Thank you very much, Ma, for that lecture. Now, this is the way to exit the hall. The inaugural lecturer, personal guest. We go through the exit B by my left hand side. The academic procession and academic staff, we pass through the center I, while the non teaching staff, we move outside after the, academic, the procession, outside the main hall and turn to their right-hand side, there's a table for a special preparation for them there. So please, may we rise for the FUNAB and TEM. National Anthem. Uh, 
Please let's remain standing while the academic procession exit the hall in reverse order. We want to thank everybody for making our time to be here today to listen to this very, very interesting 77th inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta, by Professor Comfort Adenike Onifade. We wish and hope to see you again next time we are holding another inaugural lecture. We appreciate you once again. We appreciate everybody, members of FUNAB community, our special guests from outside. We say thank you and welcome. Please, all FUNAB students, all FUNABites, go through the exit two up there to collect your food. Gallery, you go to the gallery. You can pass through the exit two, FUNABites. Go to the gallery, please. Go to the gallery. Inaugural.